Now let's go. We have the function f of t is equal to cosh a t. f of t is equal to cosh a t. You know, this is different from cos a t. You know, cosh is talking about a hyperbolic function. Okay? Cosh is used in hyperbolic. Now let's go. Uh, the question is we are asked to evaluate or find the Laplace transform of cosh at. You recall that by definition of Laplace transform, we say that Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of t dt. Okay, so now our function f of t is cosh at. So when we say the Laplace transform of cosh at, that means it's going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st in place of f of t now, we say cosh at dt. Is that clear? All right, you know, for us to evaluate this integral, we are going to use two methods in this video. I'm going to show you how to do it using hyperbolic substitution and then how to do it using direct method or we say using the first principle. Using the what? The first principle. Now let's go. Using hyperbolic substitution. Recall that e raised to the power of x is the same thing as saying cosh x plus psi x. Okay, e raised to the power of x is the same thing as saying cosh s plus psi x. Okay, now when you see e raised to the power of minus x now, it's going to give you cosh s minus psi x. Hello, good. Now look at this. When you say equation 1 plus equation 2, what is it going to give you? So when you say e raised to the power of x plus e raised to the power of minus x, that is the left hand side of the equation, is equal to in the right hand side. When you say cosh s plus psi x plus cosh s minus psi x. So, you know, we have psi x minus psi x again. So this is going to go, right? Then we have cosh s plus cosh x is going to give us 2 cosh x. So that means we have e raised to the power of x plus e raised to the power of minus x is equal to 2 cosh x. We are, make, we are looking for cosh s. So we divide both sides by 2. So cosh x is going to give us e raised to the power of x plus e raised to the power of minus x all over 2. Do you get this, right? Good. Now, again, what if you say equation 1 minus equation 2? What is going to give us? In the left-hand side, we are going to have e raised to the power of x minus e raised to the power of minus x is equal to, when you say cosh s plus psi x minus cosh x minus psi x. So in this case now, cosh s minus cosh s is going to give you zero. And then when you see psi x minus minus psi x, minus minus is going to give us plus. So we have two psi x. Okay. We are looking for psi x. We divide both sides by two. So dividing both sides by two, we are going to say that psi x is equal to e raised to the power of x minus e raised to the power of minus x all over 2. All right? Yes. So now, in the function that we are given, we have f of t is equal to cosh at, not cosh s. So in place of x, we can replace it with at. Hello? In place of x, in what we just solved now, we can replace it with what? 
t so we say cosh x is equal to e raised to the power of x minus e raised to the power of minus x all over 2. So we we'll say cosh a t that means in place of x we write a t is going to give us e raised to the power of a t plus e raised to the power of minus a t all over 2. All right, good. Now let's go. You know, we have the function f of t is equal to cosh a t. And then we are asked to find the Laplace transform of cosh a t. And then we say that it is the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus s t cosh a t dt. And then here we say using hyperbolic substitution. So in place of this cosh a t, we can replace it with this value we just obtained now. That we say e raised to the power of a t plus e raised to the power of minus a t all over 2. Okay, so replacing it now, we are going to have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st open bracket e raised to the power of a t plus e raised to the power of minus a t all over 2. Close the bracket dt. Okay, good. Now let's go. You know, in this case now, we can factor out 1 all over 2 from the fraction so that the fraction will go. So when we factor out 1 all over 2 and then you see that 1 all over 2 is a constant, we can take it behind the integral sign direct. So when you factor out 1 all over 2 and take it behind the integral sign, we have 1 all over 2, the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus st, open bracket, e raised to the power of at, plus e raised to the power of minus a t dt. Okay? Now, applying the law of indices in multiplying this is the same as saying the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus s t multiplied by e raised to the power of a t plus e raised to the power of minus s t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus a t dt. Okay, applying the, the law of indices properly now. You know, here we have the same base but different powers. We add their powers since they are having the same base, right? Good. Now that means we are going to have 1 all over 2, the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus st plus at plus e raised to the power of minus st minus at dt. Okay. So, in this case now, we are going to factor out t in all of them. That is in the exponent or in the power, okay? So, when you factor out t, what do we have? We are going to have 1 all over 2, the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus s plus a in bracket t. Plus, we have e raised to the power of minus s minus a in bracket t dt okay good now let's apply the integral to both of them so here we're going to have 1 all over 2 the integral of 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus s plus a close bracket t dt plus the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of we factor out negative right we have negative 1 Open bracket s plus a in bracket t. We factor out negativity here, right? We have the t. Now let's integrate properly now. So integrating, we have one all over two open bracket e raised to the power of minus s plus a t all over minus s plus a. You know this minus s plus a is actually a constant. And the variable is t. All right? Good. Now, let's go. We have plus. Integrating the second one now. We also have e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus a close bracket t all over minus open bracket s plus a close bracket. And then our limit we have from 0 to infinity. Is that clear? So, from here. 
let's remove this fraction by factoring out the constant okay so when we do so we have 1 all over 2 open bracket 1 all over minus x plus a which is the denominator we factor it out is a constant okay then we have e raised to the power of minus s plus a close the bracket t the boundary 0 to infinity plus then the second one we have 1 all over minus s plus a close the bracket e raised to the power of minus open bracket s plus a close the bracket t all right yes 0 to infinity now let's go the first one now so when you plug in the upper limit this is what you are going to have and then the lower limit this is what you are going to have plus the second one the upper limit this is what you are going to have the lower limit this is what you are going to have okay good now when you evaluate e raised to the power of minus s plus a in bracket infinity is going to give you what zero and then when you evaluate e raised to the power of minus s plus a close the bracket multiply by zero so it's going to give you e raised to the power of zero and e raised to the power of zero is one okay good plus let's go to the second one also again when you say e raised to the power of minus s plus a multiplied by infinity it's also going to give us zero but when we say e raised to the power of minus s plus a close the bracket multiply by zero it's going to give us e raised to the power of zero and e raised to the power of zero is one okay good so here we have one all over two open bracket 1 all over minus s plus a open bracket 0 minus 1 so 0 minus 1 is minus 1 so minus 1 multiplied by this 1 all over minus s plus a it will change the sign so we are going to have 1 all over s minus a because of this minus 1 so now going to the next one we also have the same thing we have 0 minus 1 which is what minus 1 so minus 1 multiplied by 1 all over minus upper bracket s plus a so it's going to remove down negative there okay so here we have 1 all over 2 in bracket 1 all over s minus a plus 1 all over s plus a is that true yes let's combine this together the lcm we have s minus a multiplied by s plus a that is the lcm so evaluating combining these together here we have one all over two open bracket s plus a in bracket plus s minus a in bracket all over s minus a in bracket s plus a in bracket hope you understand how we do this right now let me explain now you've gotten the lcm that is the product of the two right good when you say s minus a multiplied by s plus a okay divided by the denominator of the first term which is s minus a so s minus a will cancel out s minus a right good remaining s plus a so we have s plus a multiplied by one that is the numerator is going to give you s plus a then we have plus following the same procedure when we say s minus a multiplied by s plus a divided by s plus a s plus a we cancel right we're going to be left with s minus a then s minus a multiplied by one it's going to give you s minus a all right good now in the numerator let's remove the bracket so when we remove the bracket we're going to have one all over two open bracket now s plus a plus s minus a all over s squared plus a s minus a s minus a squared so that is when you open the bracket in the numerator and also open the bracket in the denominator okay this is what we have so looking at the numerator carefully you will see that we have a minus a so a minus a is equal to what zero and then we have s plus s so when we say s plus s is equal to 2s so here we have 1 all over 2 
open bracket 2s all over. In this case, again, in our denominator, we have as minus as, which is what? Zero. So finally, we have in the denominator x squared minus a squared. So here we have 1 all over 2, open bracket, 2s all over s squared minus a squared. So here we have 1 all over 2. So 1 all over 2 multiplied by 2 up is going to give you what? 1. Okay? So therefore, the 2 we cancel. So when the 2 cancel, we are going to have s all over s squared minus a squared. Hello? It's going to give you s all over s squared minus a squared. So therefore, the Laplace transform of cosh at is equal to s all over s squared minus a squared. All right? Likewise, if you have something like the Laplace transform of cosh 40, it's the same thing as saying s all over s squared minus 16. Because when you say our a here is what is 4, then when you say a squared, it's going to give you 4 times 4, which is 16. So therefore, the Laplace transform of cosh at is equal to s all over s squared minus a squared. This is using hyperbolic substitution. Now, let's go to using direct method. Now, let's go. You know, I told you we are going to also solve this using the first principle. Here we have our function f of t is equal to cosh a t using the first principle. That is direct integration. Now, let's go. You know, going by the definition of Laplace transform. We said that the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f of t dt. And then here now, our function f of t is cosh at. So we say the Laplace transform of cosh at is going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt. All right. So here, using the first principle is direct integration. So for us to integrate directly, we are going to apply integration by path. Integration by path. And then you still recall the formula for integration by path. Integration by path states that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Is that clear? Yes. So now, in this case, we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt. So we are going to say let u equal to cosh at. Let's decide to use our cosh at as u. Let's use cosh at as what? As u. So as we have u now equal to cosh at, we differentiate this u with respect to t. We differentiate the u with respect to t. So when we do so, we are going to have the differentiation or the derivative of cosh at is a psi at. Hello, is what? Is a psi at. You know, this is different from normal cos, you know. Okay, so in cosh, instead of you to have negative, it's positive. Hello, is what? It's positive. All right, good. Now let's go again. We have the u all over the t is equal to a psi a t. Good. Now let's cross multiply to make the u the subject. So when you cross multiply, making the u the subject, we are going to have the u is equal to a psi a t is equal to a psi a t. Now let's go again. You know, after when we identified cosh a t to be our u, every other thing remaining should be our dv. So whatsoever remaining there, we say let dv is equal to e raised to the power of minus st dt. Okay, 
So we have dv is equal to e raised to the power of minus st dt. Let's integrate both sides. Integrating both sides, we have the integral of dv is equal to the integral of e raised to the power of minus st dt. So when you integrate, we're going to have v is equal to e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s. Hello. So here now, we have identified our u. We have identified our v. We have identified our du. And we have identified our dv. So let's apply. Let's bring it together in this formula. Integration by part that we have the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. Okay, now let's go. You know, we have uh, the integral, the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt, which we say is equal to what is our u v. Our u is cosh at. Our v is e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s. So we we'll multiply this together. That is our u v is going to give us cosh a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t all over minus s. Okay. Now our boundary zero to infinity. Then we have minus the integral from zero to infinity again. So our v d u that is v multiplied by d u. So d u is a psi a t and d u. And V is E raised to the power of minus ST all over minus S. So when you say DU multiplied by V, it's going to give us A psi AT multiplied by E raised to the power of minus ST all over minus S DT. All right? Good. Now let's go. Let's pick this first term here. This one that we say uv this is our uv uv that we multiply let's pick it and simplify it so we have cosh at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s right good then we say the limit from zero to infinity let's remove the fraction we factor out the constant which is minus 1 all over s. So we we'll factor out minus 1 all over s. We have remaining cosh at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st. All right, good. Now we have limit 0 to infinity. Now we are going to apply the upper limit minus the lower limit. So doing so, we are going to have minus 1 all over s, open bracket, cosh upper limit now infinity multiplied by e raised to the power of minus infinity minus the lower limit now we have cosh zero and then e raised to the power of zero okay so we know that e raised to the power of minus infinity is zero so zero multiplied by whatsoever be the value of cosh infinity is going to give you zero now the other side we have cosh zero is equal to one cause zero is the same as cosh zero so the value for cosh zero is the same as the value for cosh zero all right so when you say cos zero is one and then cosh zero is also one now one multiplied by e raised to the power of zero which is also one is one so here we have minus one all over s open bracket zero minus one okay so you say zero minus one is minus one so minus one multiplied by minus one all over s outside is going to give you one all over s so here we simplified our uv and then our uv gives us one all over s okay so let's bring it back now that means we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt is equal to our uv now we say one all over s minus the integral from zero to infinity 
a psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t all over minus s d t. All right, good. So in this last term, let's also factor out the fraction, okay, which is also a constant. So factoring out the constant, we're going to have minus a s is being factored out, okay? So when we factor out minus a s, we're going to have psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t d t. So when you take this minus a all over s behind the integral sign, there is negative also there already, right? So negative multiplied by negative is going to give you what? Positive. So here we have 1 all over s plus a all over s, the integral from 0 to infinity, psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt. Hello. So for the last time now, let's integrate this uh, integral where we have the integral from 0 to infinity, psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt. So applying the same procedure that we just used again, that is integration by part, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, okay? So we say let u equal to psi a t. So here we have psi a t, u is equal to psi a t, we differentiate u with respect to t. So that means we say du all over the t. So differentiating psi a t is going to give you a cosh a t. It's going to give you a cosh a t. Then making du the subject, we simply cross multiply. We say that du is equal to a cosh a t dt. All right, good. You know, after when you identified psi a t to be your u, whatsoever that is remaining again should be identified also as dv. So here we say let dv equal to the values that are remaining, which is e raised to the power of minus st dt. All right, so let's integrate both sides. So integrating both sides, we have the integral of the v is equal to the integral of e raised to the power of minus st dt, all right? So when we integrate, we're going to have v is equal to e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s, all right? Good, you know, here now we have integrated and also differentiated to find our du and v. So here we have, we know our u, we know our v, we know our du, and we know our dv. All right? So now let's bring this together in integration by part and simplify. Let's see what we are going to have. You know, here we are evaluating this function. The integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus st cosh, a t d t and then we say it is equal to 1 all over s plus a all over s the integral from 0 to infinity psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t d t so this is what we are what we want to evaluate and then in this last term where we have a all over s the integral from 0 to infinity psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t the t we apply integration by parts so we applied integration by part so the integration by part we know our u we know our v so what is our u you know our u says sine a t okay that is our u and then our v is e raised to the power of minus s t all over minus s right so when you say, when you multiply these two together now, we're going to have 1 all over s plus, you know, we have a all over s outside, multiplying the integral, right? So we open a big bracket now. Then we will multiply our uv 
this is what we have psi at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st minus all over minus s then we place our limit from zero to infinity then we have minus then we have v du so what is our v our v is e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s then multiply by our du okay and then we we'll say that our du is a cosh a t so you multiply these two together we have minus the integral from zero to infinity a cosh a t multiply by e raised to the power of minus st all over minus s dt all right good once again you know in this uh uv we will multiply uv okay let's remove the fraction but before we remove the fraction you know here we have a s let's use this a s to open the big bracket let's use the a s to do what to open the big bracket that is to say this a s we multiply the u v and multiply the integral of v d u okay good so when we open the b bracket now we have one all over s plus a all over s open bracket you know we want to factor out uh, the fraction which is the constant here we have minus one all over s open bracket psi a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t okay then our limit zero to infinity minus then we multiply by a t s we have a s the integral from zero to infinity we also factor out the fraction which is also the constant we have minus a all over s open bracket cosh a t e raised to the power of minus s t d t hello hope you are not confused with this right good i thank god you are getting it gradually let's go good here let's pick this uv that we just multiply this center term uv and then simplify it you know we have a all over s outside and then we factor out minus one all over s right good let's carry this minus one all over s to meet a all over s outside so as it is going we have one all over s multiplied by minus one all over s so here we have a times one a s times s s squared so here we have minus one all over s squared okay open bracket let's apply our upper limit minus the lower limit so applying here we have psi infinity e raised to the power of infinity that is our upper limit minus psi zero multiplied by e raised to the power of zero right good once again let's find the value when you say e raised to the power of minus infinity is equal to zero so zero multiplied by the value of psi infinity is equal to zero also okay good going to the next one we have minus psi zero okay so we don't know what is psi zero but we know that it is the same value with sine zero okay then sine zero is equal to zero hello sine zero is equal to zero now zero multiplied by one is going to give you zero all right good so here we have zero minus zero which is zero multiplied by every other thing is going to give you zero all right yes now let's go again we see that this our uv now gives us zero so we do away with it so what do we have remaining now we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt is equal to one all over s minus a all over s the integral from zero to infinity minus a all over s open bracket cosh at multiply by e raised to the power of minus st close bracket dt okay so we take this minus as 
behind the integral sign so minus a s is going out to meet another minus a s so meeting another minus a s minus minus will give you positive so here we are going to have a squared all over s squared so therefore we have one all over s plus a squared all over s squared the integral from zero to infinity cosh a t multiplied by e raised to the power of minus s t dt all right yes now please pay attention to what we are going to do here you know looking at this carefully from the left hand side we have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt and then in our right hand side the last term the integral that we have there is the same the integral from zero to infinity cosh at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st dt is the same right we can take it to the left hand side to meet the like term so taking it to the left hand side to make the like term we are going to have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt minus you know it is positive y coming it will turn to what minus so we have minus we have a squared all over s squared the integral from zero to infinity cosh at multiplied by e raised to the power of minus st dt is equal to one all over s hello is equal to what one all over s now look at this left hand side carefully so looking at it carefully what do they have in common you see that the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt is common, right? In the first one, it is there. In the second term, it is there. Now, let's factor out this, this integral. Factoring out this integral in the first term, we are going to have 1 remaining. Factoring it out in the second one, we are going to have minus a squared all over a squared remaining. So, here we are going to have 1 minus a squared all over s squared in bracket the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt is equal to 1 all over s hello is equal to what 1 all over s now in this bracket now let's combine it together you look for the lcm and join it together we we'll simply say 1 minus a squared all over s squared so by the time you join it together we're going to have s squared minus a squared all over s squared hello s squared minus a squared all over s squared all right we have the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt equal to 1 all over s. Now, if you look closely very well, you discover that this integral that we have here now is actually what we are looking for. Yes, it's actually what we are looking for. So, but in this case now, we have a coefficient attached to it. So, we have, we, the only thing we need to do now is to remove the coefficient. When, once we remove the coefficient, we are done with our evaluation. So for us to remove the coefficient, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient, by the inverse of the coefficient. Okay, now pay attention. Here we have s squared minus a squared all over s squared. So if you want to remove this expression now multiply by its inverse the inverse is going to give you s squared all over s squared minus a squared hello so when you multiply both sides by this inverse in the left hand side it will disappear okay and then in the right hand side this is what we're going to have we're going to have the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st cosh at dt is equal to you know, we have 1 all over s multiplied by s squared all over s squared minus a squared. Hello. All over what? A squared. Now, look at this very well. You know, we have s squared in our numerator and we have another s in our denominator. So, 1s in the numerator, we cancel 1s in the denominator. We are going to have s. All over s squared minus a squared. 
Hello. So therefore, we say that the Laplace transform of cosh AT, the Laplace transform of cosh AT is equal to S all over S squared minus A squared. All right. Yes. A is what is four. So four times four is 16. You know, here we have evaluated the Laplace transform. Here we have evaluated the Laplace transform of cosh AT using the two method, using hyperbolic substitution and using the first principle. All right. And I'm very sure it is very clear to you. Please, I want you to watch this video again and again so that you will get it step by step. And uh, I want to use this medium to beg you, if you are watching a video, any part of the world you are, and you are yet to subscribe, please do us a favor, subscribe, like our videos, share it to your loved ones, and stay blessed. Let's go. Let's take the last one. Let's take the last one.